Welcome back. Yup, it's me, Casey, your host for another episode of Steamy Stories, written by J.C. Calciano. I've got big news for you today. You asked for a collection of all the steamy stories in a book, and we delivered. It's called Steam Room Confidential, and it's all the steamy stories printed in a series of sexy new books. You can now collect all the steamy stories and put them on a shelf in your library. Check the description below to buy them, or visit Amazon.com. Just search for Steam Room Confidential. I know that you're ready to shred, and so am I. So let's get on with today's Steamy Stories episode. This one is going to be a real headbanger. It's called School of Rock! A knock on his bedroom door woke Tyler. He sat upright in his bed and leaned against the bedrest of his worn frame. A pretty brunette woman in her late thirties walked into the room with freshly folded clothes in a basket. Ty, you up? Don't be late. It's the first day of electrician school. And don't take too long getting dressed, his mom sweetly sighed. It was no question where Tyler got his good looks from. His parents would have been the power couple if they were still in high school, but now, as adults, they'd settled down into just attractive, practical, and honest people. I'll be ready, Mom, he said as he dashed into the tiny bathroom attached to his room, slipped out of his boxers, and jumped into the shower. Like his mom, he was a brunette with thick, dark hair. He had skin that was neither too pale nor too tanned, He had a youthful, handsome face, with a tall bridge of the nose and sharp jawline, pearly white teeth, and piercing green eyes. When he walked by, he knew he had heads turning. Both men and women seemed to notice him. He was a member of the swimming club at high school, and one of the best on the team. It did him good, because he could keep his body trim and fit. Still, no one was brave enough to ask him out yet and no one was really of interest to him. So he remained single and inexperienced. Tyler was quick to oblige his mother's wishes, so he finished his shower and dashed out of the house after helping himself to a hard-boiled egg and a slice of toast. Walking the streets of Whitefish, Montana, Tyler wondered if being an electrician like his dad could genuinely make him happy in life. Now, he respected tradesmen like his father and knew it would provide him with a good and stable future, but he wasn't sure it would be enough for him. Tyler had just one thing he loved most in life, and it was music. He loved singing and even playing the piano, but what he really wanted to do was play the guitar. If given a chance, Tyler would drop everything to be a guitarist and spend his life touring with an awesome rock band. However, unlike the other musical aspects he was skilled in, his parents forbade him from learning the guitar, since they felt it was a crude instrument for playing beautiful classical music. Whenever his mother felt that she needed to justify their decision of keeping him away from rock and roll, she'd say, With a piano, you can write real music and perform exquisitely. Not like those skinny, long-haired musicians who need entire rock bands to make noise and get into trouble with the police. His dad was always quick to agree and add, Learn a craft and how to fix things, and you'll never go hungry in life. Tyler understood their point of view and figured they were right. Still, the guitar was his instrument of choice, and all he could think about was playing it and having a group of friends to jam with. The world will always need electricians, echoed in Tyler's head as he made his way through the streets of his humble small town on the way to trade school to learn his craft. School continued for months. All was going fine. Tyler enjoyed learning how to install switches, outlets, and repair wiring, 
Although he still felt unfulfilled, he knew that writing songs and creating music was his calling, and it saddened him that he needed to pursue another career to survive. One day, on his way home, things changed for him. He took an alternative route home and passed a modest tavern that boasted a local in-house rock band on the marquee. He could hear the sound of wailing rock music, and it drew him toward it like a moth to a flame. What were those incredible sounds? Who in this town knows how to jam like that? Could it be someone just blasting the radio, or is that music coming from that tiny bar? From that point on, each afternoon on his way home from classes, Tyler took the longer route past the tavern. He would arrive at the bar, stand by the window, and listen to the band rehearse for that night's gig. Their riffs were solid, and the lead guitarist was masterful. At first, he could only stand by the open window and listen. But one day, the back door was left open. Dare I look in? What do they look like? Maybe I could catch a glimpse of who is creating those insane tracks. Tyler cautiously stuck his head into the dark back area, where he could smell the pungent aroma of stale beer. From the vantage point of the back door, he could see the small stage lined with wires, cords, amplifiers, and lights. Having not been in a bar before, to Tyler this modest tavern looked like a magical and forbidden place. Let's fire up the lights. I want to try something new with the spot. A deep voice called out. Seconds later, a metallic thump engaged a heavy switch. The stage lit up, and the lights revealed four men in their early twenties, who could only be described as breathtaking. The glow of the bright amber lights made these men seem almost magical. Each of them was uniquely sexy in their own ways, but the lead guitarist was too hot for words. Tyler couldn't look away from this tall, lean rock god. He had an almost boyish appearance that sported a scruffy, handsome face. From the t-shirt he wore, Tyler could see his well-defined muscles, and his biceps rippled with every movement he made. He stood there in the shadows for hours, mesmerized at the sights and sounds that they created. Tyler knew that this was what he was meant to do with his life. The next day, Tyler rushed to the bar after classes. As fortune would have it, he found the door opened every day after that. Was there a janitor who opened the door to air out the stuffy bar? Or was someone intentionally leaving it ajar, knowing that Tyler would be stopping by. No matter, this was his sanctuary, and listening to this band was the only place he wanted to be. One day, as he daydreamed about the band on his way to school, he absentmindedly tripped. As he stumbled, he grabbed onto a nearby telephone pole to catch himself before hitting the pavement. Now, propped up against the pole, he saw something that not only caught his attention, but captivated his imagination. It was a flyer that advertised guitar lessons. The notice was prominent, bold, and taped front and center to his face. It read, Want to play guitar? Take lessons now. No excuses. Ninety bucks a month. And at the bottom was a Call Gavin next to a local phone number. Gavin? Could it be the lead guitarist from the group I've been watching for the past few weeks? Although he'd never been close enough to any of the band to know who was who, he certainly knew what their names were just by listening to them talk amongst themselves. Tyler realized what he needed to do, despite what his parents would say to him. Somehow, He needed to secretly raise enough money to enroll in these guitar lessons, especially if one of the sexy musicians from the bar was teaching them. The cost of the lessons were cheaper than he expected, 
Still, he was not able to afford it. If he was going to live his dream as a guitarist, he needed to get a job. As fortune would have it, he overheard his parents talking about how their local pharmacist needed a part-time delivery person and paid five bucks per delivery. That day, Tyler applied and accepted a delivery job at Hander Pharmacy. He was grateful for the employment and eager to earn enough for lessons with Gavin. Between his modest salary and tips, he raised a little over a hundred bucks within a few weeks. Money in hand, he excitedly rang the number on the flyer. On the fourth ring, a rich, baritone voice came through his phone speakers. Gavin Mondo speaking. The tone of the voice was exactly like the lead guitarists he saw performing at the bar. It must be the same Gavin, he thought. Tyler could feel his heart race. Nervously, he continued, attempting to be as cool as possible. I called regarding an ad about a guitar teacher. Yeah? I want to take guitar lessons. When would be a good time to start? Um, you tell me. I'm ready when you are. I'm good almost any morning. That is, after 11 a.m. Tyler rushed to get the words out of his mouth. Awesome! I'll be by your place at 11 a.m. Just tell me your address, and I'll see you tomorrow. The voice was surprised, but kind. Uh, sure. Great. He was excited to start his secret session with the artist he had admired for months. Adrenaline coursed through his body, giving him a rush. He was grateful that he wasn't exhausted this morning, since he didn't sleep much the night before, due to his excitement. Peering in the window at the address, Tyler was amused by the modest apartment's black painted walls and dark, light-blocking draperies. <laughs> if I didn't know any better, I think a vampire lived here. Such is the life of a musician, I guess. As Gavin opened the door and motioned him to enter. This tall, lean stud wore black tattered jeans ripped at the knees and a torn Motley Crew t-shirt that had the sleeves cut off. It seemed that not everything in his skinny jeans was thin. In fact, the length and size of what tucked beside Gavin's fly seemed almost intimidating. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gavin. You must be the guy from the phone. I didn't get your name then. He confessed, stretching out his long, toned arms to a handshake. Tyler nervously introduced himself. I'm Tyler. There was a moment of awkward silence between the two men as Tyler stole a look at the sexy rocker in front of him. Although roughly the same age, the two young men couldn't have appeared more different. Gavin looked ridiculously hot with his long, dark, beautiful hair and tats up the arm. The clean, sharp lines of ink were shaped into a, an eagle, a cross, and a compass just below the elbow. Gavin sized Tyler up as well. The young fellow standing in front of him in chinos and a white button-down shirt seemed too clean-cut and almost impossibly proper to want to take lessons from someone like him. Is this young man here to take lessons or sell me an encyclopedia? <laughs> Gavin chuckled to himself. At long last, Gavin stated, Dude, welcome. Let's get you started with those lessons. Are you nervous, excited, or both? <laughs> both are good, because it's going to be a lot of work, but you'll love it, I promise. Tyler followed Gavin into the dimly lit but smartly decorated apartment. Oh, this guy has a surprisingly unique style. Tyler was surprised at how clean and trendy everything was. He felt guilty that he expected to be walking into a dirty, unkempt flat rather than a stylish studio. Do you have your guitar with you? Gavin inquired, curious about how someone could arrive for a lesson without an instrument in their possession. Oh, 
no, 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 I don't. Tyler replied, self-consciously. Too many no's, man. He was confused at what was going on with this proper young man. Well, what to do? What to do? Gavin replied, strolling into his kitchen, where he grabbed two water bottles from his fridge. I don't own a guitar, but I was hoping I could borrow one, Tyler replied. Borrow one? Yeah, till I get enough money to afford one. Hmm. Well, okay then. I've got an old guitar around here somewhere. I call her Chainsaw, and she's not been tuned in a while. Look, I can loan her to you, but it'll cost you more, and you won't be able to take her home. Gavin was doing his best to accommodate this young man, who was ill-prepared to take lessons. You're welcome to come here and practice whenever you'd like, Gavin explained, walking out of his kitchen. Wow, how cool are you? Um, how much to rent it? Tyler asked, hoping that he could come up with the additional money for this endeavor. Twenty bucks a month. Twenty dollars? Tyler asked again. I can't just let you use it for free, now can I? He replied, holding a bottle of water in Tyler's direction. Uh, of course not. I'll find the money to rent it. Trust me. Can I see it? He asked excitedly, eager to hold the precious guitar. Uh, sure. Let me get it for you. Gavin curiously watched Tyler's every move. He had never seen someone with such eagerness to play before. That is, um, other than himself. Gavin darted into what seemed to be his bedroom, and resurfaced a minute later with a black Dearmond M65C. I haven't used it in a while. She's my first guitar. The one I learned on. She's got a special place in my heart. So, be gentle. He chuckled as he continued. You never forget your first, right? Tyler wholeheartedly agreed, although he wasn't sure what he was talking about. Gavin continued. There's an amp behind that chair. Let's plug it in there. We'll take her out for a spin after I tune her for you. Gavin adjusted the strings and wiped down the body and neck. Good as new. She's a beauty, all right? I'd be lying if I didn't say she brought back lots of wonderful memories. Gavin looked melancholy as he carefully handed over the guitar. Tyler took the guitar and placed it on his lap, slinging the strap over his shoulder. A smile crossed Tyler's face as he looked at Gavin with an expression of pure joy and excitement. Gavin couldn't help but find Tyler's enthusiasm infectious as he pulled his chair close to him and sat between his open legs. Here, let me take your hand and show you how to hold the neck. I'll then give you the finger placement for a few chords. Tyler's breath grew short. Having this sexy musician straddled between his legs was driving him crazy. He wasn't sure what excited him more. The gorgeous guitar on his lap, or the hot bad boy rocker seated inches away from him. Tyler's eyes became fixated on Gavin's biceps that were surprisingly ripped for his lean frame. They had a distinct, round, tight shape that glistened, even in the faint light of his apartment. When Gavin wailed on the strings of his own guitar, almost brutally, savagely, he commanded the instrument as if it were a beast to be tamed. Tyler's breath became thin at the thought of Gavin controlling him like he did his guitar. The two men strummed and practiced finger placement for a bit. Finally, Gavin instructed, Keep at it. Just get comfortable holding the instrument and strumming. The chords and changes will come to you soon. Tyler happily focused his attention on the guitar as Gavin got up from his chair to give him some space to practice. Stay here for as long as you want. Tomorrow we'll officially start your lessons. I'll introduce you to Scales. Don't forget to close the door on your way out. I've got to meet the band now. He grabbed his instrument 
and headed out with a wink. Thank you, Tyler called after him, not being able to stop himself from checking out Gavin's spectacular ass as he slipped out the door. Every day, faithfully, Tyler would leave school and head to Gavin's, where he'd spend hours reviewing the skills Gavin taught him the week prior and practicing the songs the band played in the bar. Tyler was obsessed with playing and loved spending time at Gavin's, even if Gavin left him there to practice as he went on with his day. It was a hot Monday. He had just arrived at Gavin's apartment when he got a call from the pharmacy. It had been almost a year since he had started doing deliveries there and begun his lessons. The guitar case was open, and he had not yet finished tuning the guitar. His cell rang, with caller ID notifying him it was work calling. Hello? What's up? Is everything okay? Is there an emergency delivery you need me for? The pharmacist solemnly answered. No, I don't need you to come in. I just wanted to let you know as soon as possible that the drugstore will be closing, and we won't be requiring your services any longer. What? How come? Panicked at the thought that his income was about to disappear. Mail order, son. Everything's being sent to people by mail. I'm retiring. No need for a local drugstore with the big chains moving in. His boss replied resignedly. What will I do for money? How am I supposed to pay for lessons? Tyler felt like crying. His chance to continue to learn the guitar was slipping away from him. I understand, but there's nothing I can do. What's done is done. You'll need to stop by before Wednesday for your last paycheck. Soon we'll be locking the doors for good. Sorry, kid. The pharmacist hung up before he could get a chance to speak. Tyler knew he had to explain the situation to Gavin, Although he assumed that he knew what was going on, to some extent, based on his proximity to him while on the call. Tyler's usual enthusiastic smile turned into a somber expression, as he readied himself to break the bad news. Gavin smiled before he could get a word out. Dude, don't bother. We'll talk about it. Later. Let's just jam now. We'll worry when we need to. Now's not the time to be bummed. Now's the time to rock! Gavin made no efforts to continue the discussion, as he busied himself by plugging his guitar into the amp, unfazed by the bad news. Uh, all right, if you say so, Tyler replied, unsure of why he didn't want to discuss the matter, but he followed Gavin's instructions and prepared himself to jam. The two men jammed, playing their favorite songs on their guitars together for hours. From Iron Maiden to ACDC, they had Highway to Hell on repeat until Tyler's mom texted him to come home for dinner. Shit. Lost track of time. I gotta split. My parents are waiting for me to eat dinner. Tyler took the guitar strap off his shoulder and carefully placed the guitar in his case. He lifted it and handed it to Gavin with a broken expression on his face. Here you go. Tyler apologized as he continued with the conversation he dreaded to have. I doubt I'll be back for a while for any more lessons. I appreciate you loaning me your guitar for all these months. She's a beauty. I could see why you love it so much. Tyler fought the urge to become emotional about not spending time with Gavin. Hard as he fought it, though, his eyes swelled with tears. Gavin pretended not to notice, as he casually asked, Bro, what are you doing with that guitar? Why are you handing it to me? She's yours now. Mine? Uh, What are you talking about? Didn't you hear? I can't take lessons anymore. I lost my job. Gavin was super chill, as he explained. Bro, yeah. Last year you started paying me to rent it. I would have let you borrow it for free. 
I just wanted to see if you were serious about playing. It turns out you were as serious as a heart attack, and just as intense. I figure that by now you've given me enough money to have paid for it in full. Gavin smiled as he spoke, amused at Tyler's confused expression. Tyler was cautious about getting too excited. Could it be that this guitar was really now his? Gavin's face told him everything he needed to know. It was clear that Chainsaw was now his guitar. Tyler beamed. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll I'll take care of it forever. It's got a good home. I promise. I know it does. I hope you have as many years shredding on it as I did. Gavin replied with an emotional grin. Tyler still needed to address his goodbye to Gavin. Guess we'll have to wait till I get another job before I see you again. Then I can take lessons. Gavin didn't look up. Instead, he rummaged through a few papers on the coffee table in front of him. If you think I wouldn't continue to go through all the trouble of remembering to prop open the bar door so you could sneak in to see me, you've got another thing coming. Tyler was shocked, and a bit embarrassed that he was found out, although he thought it sweet that Gavin enjoyed having him as a not-so-secret audience. Gavin continued, And as far as lessons, the truth is you don't need them anymore. You're quite good. All you need to do is play. You'll get great just by ripping through songs with us. You've already got the basics all down pat, as well as all of our songs. Tyler was confused. So, no more lessons? Even if I could pay you? Gavin looked at him intently, with a straightforward reply. No more lessons, even if you could afford to pay me. Two reasons. One... You don't need them. And two, because I never date my students. Band members, on the other hand, are a different story. Tyler wasn't sure he heard that correctly. He stood motionless. Gavin laughed and continued. Dude, don't make this tougher than it is for me. I'm asking you out on a proper date and to join the band. Don't leave a guy hanging. Gavin asked in an almost bashful tone. Tyler couldn't believe his ears or decide which he was more excited about, joining a band or going out with Gavin. Yes, I want to join the band and hell yeah, I'd I'd love to go out with you. Are you kidding me? Tyler couldn't answer fast enough. He practically jumped up and down as he spoke. Gavin chuckled. Good, your first gig with us will be Saturday. Now the important question, what's your Friday like? Wanna plan something at six? Chinese food? He asked sweetly. Tyler didn't answer immediately. Not because he wasn't sure if he was available on Friday, but because he was still in shock that this sexy rock star was asking him out. Who knew he was even interested in guys? Gavin wasted no time offering up another time to go out. If Friday's no good, another day is totally fine. Tyler shot back quickly. Oh, no, Friday's great. Friday's great. I I love Fridays. I love it. Uh, uh, For the... (laughs) For the last year, I've sat here across from you, thinking of you, imagining what it would feel like to kiss you. I, I just don't know that I want to wait till Friday to feel your lips on mine. Tyler didn't need to ask twice, as Gavin lifted the guitar strap off his shoulder and laid his instrument on the nearby rack. He drew Tyler in by the waist, their eyes closing as he kissed him softly, his lips applying just the right amount of pressure as he cupped his hand to his face, stroking his long, dark hair as they kissed. Tyler seized the opportunity. He had finally gotten his hands on Gavin's biceps, and he caressed them softly, tracing the fine lines that separated each protruding muscle. Gavin playfully pushed Tyler against the wall, as if he wanted to get more leverage so that he could kiss him deeper. Tyler had never kissed a man before. 
and the stubble of Gavin's face made his sweet lips feel even hotter. Dare he place his hand on his chest? <laughs> he was excited to see what a man's body would feel like. Gavin's firm pecs under his t-shirt were impressively tight and muscular. Tyler couldn't restrain himself as he ran his hand down across Gavin's chest to his stomach, feeling his rippling abs one by one. God, I don't want to stop at these chiseled abs. I've got to know what's in store for me further down. Tyler ached to slip his hand beneath the waistband of Gavin's jeans. Then Tyler's mother texted him again, requesting him to return home for dinner. Tyler relented, and the two men broke off from their kiss. Both craved to go further but were aware that it might be best to wait until a proper date before progressing. Friday, then? Gavin asked, as he panted, light-headed from excitement. Uh, Friday. Tyler smiled as he attempted to regain his composure. He quickly planted a sweet kiss on Gavin before heading out. I'm looking forward to it, he added, as he made haste to get home. Walking home, Thoughts of playing with the band full-time filled his mind, as did ideas for several songs. It was like he floated home that day. Tyler was excited to start a new career with a fantastic new boyfriend by his side. Little did he know that a scout from a major record label would be at the bar that Saturday. And soon, the band would sign a multi-album deal and release several tracks that would chart at number one. I hope that one got your motor running. I know it got mine revving. <laughs> this is Steamy Stories, the podcast where bromance turns bromosexual. Tune in next month for our latest episode. And don't forget to buy the collection of the steamy stories on Amazon, Steam Room Confidential. <laughs> Later, bro.